Amen. 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 So, um, <laughs> so I've been studying this word abad. Abad. Mm -hmm. It was A B A D. And uh, I thought I would share some of that. I, I wanted to share some of the things that I'm learning with that. You know, there's um, one of the mandates I got when I went to one of the Transform Our World conferences a while back was empower the marketplace ministry. And so I think that that's going to be some of what we'll be doing this year. And the word abad, uh, abad, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's A-B-A-D in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the word um, for work. To work or to serve or to uh, to till to labor and so just sort of diving into that word and, and trying to get an understanding of what that means so i'm going to share let me get my screen up here y'all ready for a presentation ready sure. all right let me see i gotta move this thing colors are pretty there we go. Isn't that nice? That's beautiful. Yeah. Big and bold. So the word. Big and bold is good. Yeah. Mama That's Kelly good. got on me one time, so I had to change it. <laughs> but uh, I like it. So the word abad. <laughs> page, yeah. Is is Hebrew, and it means work. Sometimes it's translated as work. Sometimes it's translated as serve. Sometimes it's translated as labor. Labor, yeah. Sometimes it's translated as worship. Worship, okay, yeah. Yeah, or, or it's, it's, sometimes it's referred to as like being uh, in bondage or uh, being in a, a bonded relationship to someone. Bonded relationship. And so we want to go into that uh, tonight and look at that. And... The first time, you know, anything, the first time it's mentioned in scripture is always important, right? Yes. It's called the first mention. First, first, first mention. And, and it creates a precedent. And so the first time that this word is mentioned is in Genesis 2.15. It's after the creation. God created man. And he said, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work which is Abad, to work it and keep it. Now, isn't it interesting that uh, the first man was just created and the very first instruction that God gave man was to Abad. That's the very first thing he ever told him to do. So it is really important, right? Because it becomes that which is... is um, I don't know, there's, it's like the first word of a child that a child learns to speak. I mean, it's the first word, it's, it's something really significant. This is the first thing that God ever instructed man to do was to work and or to abide. The uh, second time it's mentioned is in Genesis 3.23. It says, therefore, the Lord God sent him, this was after the fall, sent him out from the garden of Eden to work or abide the ground from which he was taken. So notice that the first instruction that he gave man before the fall was to work. And the first instruction he gave man after the fall was what? To work. He sent him out the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. There's a, many things to say about it, but one thing is God first instructed, first instruction to man was to work or abide. Secondly, our work is in reference to him and obedience to his voice. So what I mean by that is, is we are his creation. The first command that he gave us is to work. But we work because he said to do it, right? It's, 
it's our obedience is to do what he says to do, but it's always in reference to him. Now, I'm spending time on this because, because when when our work is in order with God, everything really runs good. And when our work is out of order with God or not in reference to him, or he's not the end game, then it becomes disordered and it actually becomes a form of idolatry. And we'll, we'll, we'll see that in a little bit. The third thing is work is still commanded by God after the fall. So you notice before the fall and after the fall. So it must be important to God for us to labor, to work, to serve, because it's the very, very first thing that he instructed a human being to do after he was created. I'm belaboring that point so much, you must have really got it by now, huh? <laughs> All right. So let's, let's look at the uh, Abad in Scripture a little further. So in Genesis 3.17, it says, And to Adam, he said, because you have listened, this is after the fall, and he was really rebuking Adam and telling him what was going to be the result of sin. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten, of the tree which I commanded you. Now that doesn't mean husbands do not listen to the voice of your wife. <laughs> it just means that in this particular instance, it wasn't good. All right. So he says, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat. Cursed is the what? The ground because of you. So notice his command was him to work the ground. And then after the fall, he said, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So he instructed him to continue to work the ground, but that it would be cursed. It would not be producing what it should be producing. Cursed is the ground. Obedience to the voice of God leads to his blessing, and disobedience leads to the what? The curse. To the curse. So notice that the first thing he said was to, to work, but it was in obedience to God that we do that. When, we, when, when Adam went into disobedience, then his very work, in some sense, to some level, became what? Cursed, even though he was still mandated to do that. After uh, Cain had killed Abel, this verse is in scripture, Genesis 4, 11, 12. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, or the word there is abad, when you work abad the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Notice again that what is it that affected man's work was sin, right? Cain killed Abel. He sinned, and then God said, you will still work the ground, but the ground will no longer yield what it's supposed to yield because of what? The sin. So it starts to move in disordered work. All right, so sin leads to the withdrawal of God's blessing and exposes us to what? To the curse. I need you to get that. Sin leads to the withdrawal of the blessing in our work and exposes us to the curse. Making sense so far? Yeah. All right. So we continue in abide in scripture, and it says here, in Exodus 1.13, so they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work, the, the Egyptians, as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service. You remember that? In mortar and brick and in all kinds of work in the field. In all their work or abad, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. 
So by the time we get to Exodus, there's this disorder in the whole notion of work. There's, there's, there's a whole Israelite nation is no longer working for God, but who are they working for? Pharaoh. Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They're under their control. And God's heart is for us to be working for him. And so God came and sent Moses. And so God was unhappy. His people were working or abiding for someone else. Remember, the original command was to work the ground in obedience to me. And now they're working in obedience to not him, but in obedience to a foreign power, to Pharaoh, to the people of Egypt. So in Exodus 3, verse 12, he said, but I will be with you. This is God talking to Moses. But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve, or the word is abad again, God on this very mountain. You shall serve, you shall abide, you shall work for God on this very mountain. Notice that. The entire reason why God wanted Israel to be freed was so that Israel could serve or work for or abide God on his very mountain. He wanted to reestablish the what? The beginning order that he had with Adam. In Exodus 4, 22, 23, look what he says. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, this is when Moses was dealing with Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son, and I say to you, let my son go that they may abide me. They may work for me. They may serve me. It's the same word. If you refuse to let them go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. Notice that God's purpose for freeing Israel is so that they will serve or abide him. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Like that's, that was the, the number one thing as part of his agenda was to have them serve him as he set up in the original way. Yes. There was a lot of other things that came with that. He, he brought them out. He, he brought them with uh, great possessions. He, 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 he fulfilled his promises. They, he healed their sickness. But in each of these instances, and he says this over and over again as you re read the story, he says, I want to bring them out so they'll work for me. I want to bring them out so that they'll serve me. The same word. I want to bring yes. them out so they'll abide me. Each, each plague, he said, tell Pharaoh to let my people go, not to just to let them go, but let them come so that they can abide for me. They can work for me. They can minister to me. They can serve me. That's so fundamental in terms of our relationship with our God. It was our original commission, and he was doing whatever he had. Did all the signs and wonders in Egypt to reestablish that original relationship wow we are made to serve labor or minister abide to god through the work we do in obedience to him you see that we we were yeah. made from the very beginning we were brought out of egypt from from that time so that we can serve, we can labor or minister, all the same word, use different language, to serve yeah. God through the work we do. Because the original commission that God gave Adam was not to simply be a priest and praise and worship him, even though that's important. No, his job was to work the ground. So... So Adam's job was to work the ground in reference to God. Work was always meant to be engaging in something that was a production 
but it was always to be in reference to God. It was being obedience to him in reference to him. It was be to be done onto him, but it was going to be some type of work. Right. Hmm. What you got, Mama Kelly? I'm thinking about the transformation towns that I've seen, like, like in, in a lot of where, where is Alamogorda, Alamogorda. Yes, when, in Guatemala. When transformation took place, the ground got very productive. Wow. Yes. So the, the curse was taken off the ground so that their carrots were as big as their arms and everything grew exponentially. They had six harvests instead of one. And because they were being obedient, transformation took place, the ground was healed. Yeah. And so right. that obedience <clears throat> thing is turned around when you get, um, the, the curse is gone when you're in obedience, in your work and in your land. Yes. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember Pastor used to always say that um, you work unto the Lord. Like all your work is onto the Lord. So whatever job you did, you went in early. You left it better than when you went there. Mm -hmm. That if you went into a hotel, you left it better than when you got there. That you cleaned. That you you was a representation of the kingdom at all times. So and it, it goes exactly what we've learned from Ed and from the word is that, you know, what Dean's teaching, you're right, honey, is that if it's on to the Lord, I mean, that's really the only way I can clean house because I'm, that's not my gig, you know, is on to the Lord, <laughs> you know, and to do it with a good heart, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm much better with people. I'm much better doing, you know, what I do for a living. I, I, that's easy to do on to the Lord, but then to do the house stuff on to the Lord that's the only way I can do it is when I'm doing it for him. It's like people say, well, would you be embarrassed if God, if Jesus knocked at your door and you had to let him in? And, you know, there was a time I had to say yes, but then <laughs> you come about it because he's already in your house. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. He already sees it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it's like, oh he my God. it under the rug. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is so important because if we're made, we were made from the very beginning to work, to serve, to labor and minister to God, but we're doing it to God through whatever we're engaged in or called to do. Right. I want to look at some examples of that. Um, so we got um, some biblical examples. Adam worked the land and was a farmer before the fall and after the fall. He was, um, it's, it's not like he had a specific job and then he had like a conversion and then he did something totally different. <laughs> no, Adam, Adam worked the land. That was, that was his, he was working onto the Lord. Once he was in disobedience, then it got destroyed and then he had to work, in some sense, onto himself because he was separated. But that's when the land became, like Mama Kelly illustrated, that's when the land became cursed. But once it, once it gets reestablished, then the land becomes blessed, like that place in Guatemala. So <clears throat> Adam worked the land and was a farmer before the fall and after the fall. Abraham herded animals before his call and after his call and during his entire journey. That's good. Abraham didn't change jobs once he, God told him to come out and go to this land. He continued to be someone who herded animals. And so he maintained that same job. But I would, I would propose to you is that he did it onto the Lord and that's why his cattle was so expansive. That's why his, his herds just expanded and he became, he was known as the, the rich guy. And so, so it was continuing the laboring that he was doing, but then it came, it, he continued to do the same job, but 
the focus was different because he was doing the same job, but it was on to what? On to the Lord. We know Joseph was a manager and he was an administrator. And Joseph, Joseph was that for Potiphar when he was in prison and later on when he worked for Pharaoh, right? Right. Oh, Egypt. Right. Ran Egypt. He ran the whole country. But we yeah. know that J Joseph maintained the same job. But because it was on to the Lord, right. it was blessed tremendously. Blessed tremendously. We know David. David had a couple of transitions, right? David had one transition was he was, uh, he was a shepherd, right? He was a worshiper. Then he became a warrior. And then he became a king. He, he had an evolution in his work. But he never left those jobs just to serve the Lord. Right. He transitioned to another job, in a sense, another type yes. of labor as the God did. He, he, he lived and died the second half of his life as a king. But it was all unto the Lord. And that's what's so beautiful about the Psalms, right? Is that you see this relationship of how it's all on to him, but he's he's fighting his enemies or he's ruling his people or he's expanding the kingdom. He's he's doing all these things. He's engaging in the world onto the Lord. I didn't put uh, Daniel in here, but we know Daniel was also, right? He served, yes. he served an evil king. He served... He served a corrupt politician who was an egomaniac. Yeah. He did it unto the Lord. And because of that, he was blessed and he was promoted. Yes. And, and he lived and died serving a foreign power. Yep. But because he did it unto the Lord, it's like he did it through that unto, the, unto God. We know Jesus was a carpenter and a contractor or a contractor. Or an architect. Or an architect. We heard he was an architect. Yeah, that word techno um, is that word is they use it translated as carpenters. The rabbis say it's an architect. It's an architect, a house builder, a planner. Wow. And so Come on. yeah. So we know, you know in 30 years. Now he had his own transition into itinerant ministry, but you know he was known as the carpenter. He was known as a worker. When he, when he preached his first sermon in Nazareth, you know, they wanted to throw him out over the hill because they said, isn't this the carpenter that we've known all these years? That was, that was his identity. And so he was very much a laborer. He was very much someone who served in, in the world of work. We know Peter James, John and Andrew, we know they were fishermen. Jesus turned them into fishermen of men, but we know, we know that they, they were in the marketplace. They, they worked in the marketplace. They, they ministered in the marketplace. Uh, Paul was a tent maker. Paul was a tent maker even when he was functioning in itinerant ministry. He continued to, to work, and that was part of his expression of how he ministered was through his work and his work was done unto the Lord. All biblical examples, right? Yes. I guess I'm talking to myself more than, than you all because part of my training was that, you know, I would engage in something secular and then after having encounters with the Lord in, in Catholicism, then I would go into say the priesthood or something and dedicate my life to the Lord now as if the other dedication wasn't worthy. And, and I think that that's the notion that we're challenging, right? Is that we all need to uh, realize that our labor, our ministry, whatever it is, if I'm a student, I do it onto the Lord. Holly Kim said, if, I, if I'm a homemaker and I'm cleaning the house, I'm doing it onto the Lord. I remember when I lived in Italy for a short period of time, there was the guys that were sweeping the streets and they did it with such great pride. Like it was, it was a very, very special thing. And I remember looking and like, I've never seen someone take so much pride in such a menial job. 
But what I really think it was happening was that they were not doing it for the street or even for the city or even for the people. I think they were doing it on to the Lord. And because they were doing it on to the Lord, they did it with levels of excellence that I would think is such a menial job. But it wasn't. It was, it was infused with this original intent that God has for labor and work. So we're called to calibrate our work to God. Calibrate means to adjust things, right? Yeah. Line up with God. So we have our work, we have our labor, our abad, and all of us have that. Whether we are in the world of work or whether we're not. I think Gracie got on. Gracie would, is, a, is a student. Perhaps she works somewhere, but she's a student. That's her work. Uh, you know, Rhonda has, does many different things, but that's her work is ministering to the homeless. Well, I was just, taking care of her grandchild. Right, but I was thinking of Rhonda. I was, I was thinking of Rhonda as an example of just a second ago is that Rhonda was a, a mother and a homemaker and she clothed her family. She fed her family. She cared for her family. Now she just does that for her grandbaby and the homeless. She does exactly yeah. the same thing. She mastered it in her home and now she's mastered it on the streets of New Orleans and with her grandbaby. So it's like she's done, she she raised her family onto the Lord. I know that for a fact. And because I know her children and her husband, and now she's doing her homelessness and love onto the Lord, and she's doing her grandbaby onto the Lord. So it's like, you know, this this thing that I can see what you're teaching is that so many people want to know what is their purpose on earth. I mean, you know, as a therapist, that's one of the questions we get. What is my purpose? What is the will of God? Well, the will of God, this is it, is to do your work onto the Lord. And as it transitions from, you know, whatever it is, like for me, being a, being a therapist and a counselor, to being a wife and a mother, and now, you know, I, I mean, I've always counseled, but it's like how, and loving people in Walmart. You know, it's, it's all the same thing. It's just being me, but doing it onto the Lord. And if I get a dollar for, excuse me, if I get a dollar for it or not, it's onto the Lord. So I have purpose. I have meaning. I have life. Right. Because the dollar doesn't become the, 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 the purpose because we, oh, we know if you make money, it's fabulous. It's nice to have, but it doesn't make you happy. You know, right. I mean, it, it's not we all need it but it's not it's not what we do it for right yeah yeah so it gives you it right here god puts right in the beginning how to have purpose on earth right work what you work, work right right that's good that's good <laughs> see my woman just flows with me there yes i can love with you baby. <laughs> so so we have to calibrate our work i want to show you this little illustration i made so we have whatever our work is, right? Or if we're accountants or whether we're administrators or companies or, uh, you know, taking care of nieces and nephews, any of those things. We have our work, our labor, it's, it's how we serve. And that we have specific positions, right? We have our positions at work or our positions in our family that are what we would consider our work. And all of that needs to be done onto the Lord. If I'm counseling, I'm gonna need to be counseling, but I'm gonna counsel whether I do it onto the Lord or whether or not. The issue is my heart's condition, is it done onto the Lord? And I'm partnering with him while I'm doing my counseling. That's the, that's the key. And I think that we've, we've separated our work from our spiritual life so much that it's become dichotomized and it was never meant because God's first thing with his relationship with us was putting work together in obedience to what he said, work the ground. So they go together. 
So that's how we have to calibrate is we have to get this all lined up. Now, what happens when my position at work becomes an end in itself and it's not unto God? You know what we call that? You want to retire, huh? Idolatry. Uh, Idolatry. Because that position becomes like an idol. Yeah, self. Um, you see what I'm saying is that is that it looks the same as the middle, except if it's not onto God, then it's onto myself or perhaps onto my family or onto the company or it's onto something. But whatever the end is, is the important. Yeah. The position needs to be a means to the end. If it becomes an end in itself, then it becomes what? Idolatrous. It becomes an idol. You see it? Yeah. It's the same you thing. Always, you always worship in something. You always right. worship. We're born to worship. That's right. And whatever's the most important thing to us is that which we worship. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, so when we talk about serving or laboring, it's about that which we give ourselves to. Yes. And so if my abad, my work, my labor is to the organization, and that becomes my end. Religion. Then it becomes idolatry. Yeah. So even if, so like you're saying, Leon, even if it's, even if I'm happy. in ministry right. and and my religious organization becomes the end and God's not the end, then that organization becomes a form of idolatry. If and I work- not, And it's not blessed, it's cursed. It's not yeah. blessed right. and it's cursed because it's not calibrated correctly, right? Right. And that's how you can go off and sin inside of something like that. And then poor God gets, I don't mean poor God, but God gets all the rap. And you wow. get stressed out and burnt out. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and another thing to add to that, what uh, Holly Kim just said, you go into all kinds of sin because if you, for, the, for that religious and that way and that works, it will lead to sin because you're pushing yourself to do something outside the grace of God. Right. It's going to push you into doing something bad, That's you know, right. in a religious standpoint. You may be going to church and working. Uh, 90 hours a week, but it's going to cause you to go into some other form of type of sin because right. you're not being fulfilled. Yeah. Right. That's exactly what I was going to say because you're not being fulfilled. You're not being. Yes. Yes. So look at this. Let's take Daniel for a second. Daniel served Nebuchadnezzar. That was his position at work as an advisor. And it was godly because it was onto the Lord, even though. The organization he was working for was totally ungodly. Yes. You see, you see what I'm saying? Unit. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. so, and the organization became sanctified through him because he didn't stop with the organization. He didn't stop with King Nebuchadnezzar. He did it all onto the Lord. Wow. And then the Lord blessed the land and uh, well, bless, bless the kingdom. Yes. The yeah. Lord bless the kingdom because of Daniel's obedience to the Lord. Because Daniel put the organization in alignment, even though it was an ungodly organization. Yeah. Because he made wow. the kingdom. That's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. you could yeah. be working for, let's say, a heathenistic type of a, an employer, but yet because you're there and you're doing it with the heart to God. Yes. I will actually bless him because of yeah. your obedience. Of being exactly. there. That's awesome. That's <laughs> so so it's the same it? thing with Joseph, right? Right. Yeah. That's, that's the same good. thing with Joseph. Yeah. Serve Pharaoh. Which was a nice. But he did it unto God. And so Egypt was sanctified through Joseph's work. Yeah. Yeah. And saved all of Joseph's people. Wow. So it gives us a whole oh. new perspective of, of work because it doesn't matter if we're working with, with ungodly organizations. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. an ungodly spouse. Right. 
You can do the yeah. same thing with an ungodly spouse or kid. Yes. Right. You right. have to, like, they don't have to be saved or have to be whatever you want to use the words for your home to be saved. Because you're, you're doing you're it in alignment. Right. Everything between you and God gets in alignment too. That's right. That's good. And I was just thinking about yeah. with, with the homeless. I mean, people are like, how can you be the homeless? It's so, you know, they're drug addicts and they're a mess and they're drunk and they're blah, 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 blah. And maybe they're criminals. But because you do it onto the Lord, you can see five, six, seven, eight years is like, what? Yes, go out there and watch what happens. Watch the Lord at work. Watch these people light up like Christmas trees because they know Jesus is in their midst. And how many, I mean, the homelessness in New Orleans is very different than it was 10 years ago. There's no doubt about it. We don't have near, near the issues Los Angeles or anybody else has. It's unbelievable. Well, that, that, I mean, that was happened with the testimony Rhonda had on the interview. The person she interviewed, the first time they were meeting, he was saying he's a Satanist. He worships right. a, this thing. But over the relationship ended with God is good. And, and he says, yes, I know God is good. <laughs> right. So, wow. so there was a transition that came through the sanctification right. of her being in alignment with I'm doing this onto God. And it's almost like, those that she served got into the winds of that sail and got caught up in it. Cause there's, there's examples of that over and over and over again. And so, so perhaps God may place us in unrighteous organizations or situations. And there's, there's a draft that occurs or even like mama Kelly was making reference to, in the Acts of the Apostles, there is this, this thing about you and your household yes. will be saved. That's right. And who was your household? Well, we tend to think of people that live in our house, but in that time, the mentality was our businesses were run, run out of our house. So right. you and your household was your, yes, your blood family, your cousins, but it was also all the customers and vendors that you dealt with through your business, yeah. that was part of your household. Yeah. And so once you get calibrated right with doing it on to God, it creates this draft that everybody else starts getting sucked up into. I could right. say, okay, Bonnie, you work with liquor, huh? You would like, you do the, uh, yes. it's like perfect. I love this because me being a recovering alcoholic, <laughs> Bonnie, brings the kingdom into these places by being there, right? And she has these um, taste testers, right? Actually, um, I'll share a little something with you. I had a, when I was working for a distributor full time, my boss, um, Teddy, him and I, we end up, one other person that used to work with us she ended up going to a different division. He got mad because her and I were friends. I was his admin. Now I was on the bad side. And we were not getting along. I mean, it was like really hard at work, going to work every day. And I remember praying to God. It's like, you know, because I'm working at a liquor distributor. You wouldn't think that's a godly place. And I remember praying to God, it's like, if this is what needs to get me out of here and somewhere else, go ahead and open up that next door. I had two interviews at Coca-Cola. The manager over at Coca-Cola used to work for the distributor I worked for. He actually called me and wanted me to go on interviews at Coke but it did not feel right at all. Wow. God ended up sending me a message. I know you were not where you think you're supposed to be, but you were right where I want you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes. It's so good. The next day, the next day I got a raise. My <laughs> boss and my <laughs> getting along. It's like, 
<laughs> if this doesn't tell me this is where I'm supposed to be, because I even had people, one person that went to the church I was going to, his brother also worked at this distributor and him and his brother didn't get along. Well, he kind of copped a little attitude with me because I work for a liquor distributor. It's like, just because I work for a liquor distributor doesn't mean I'm getting drunk. <laughs> I'm looking at numbers all day. I, I used to go in the grocery store just to see what the products look like. You know, it, it had wow. nothing to do with, you know, I, I see the, the outcome of the alcoholics because so many people end up leaving because the alcohol started getting to them. Yeah. yeah. You know, because the salespeople, yeah. they have to go in the accounts and the accounts expect them to drink with. Them. Right. Well, if you're doing that all day long, right. after so many years, it gets to you. So I've seen the bad side of it. Yeah. I'm not going to go down that road. But well, anyway, I just. Yeah, that's a great I, example I, of, that's a great example of being yeah. lined up in an right. organization and doing it onto God, and then you start seeing purpose in the midst of it. Because, you know, yes, every organization has some level of unrighteousness, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And and some much more than others. But at the same time, it's still uh, every religious organization has some levels of unrighteousness to it. So you know, no, no, nobody's exempt. Uh, but if it's onto God then it creates a whole nother thing. And I think that's a hard issue, which, which takes us to the, the next, next part is um, in Joshua, Joshua talks about serve or abide. And look at this verse. It says, only be very careful to observe the commandments and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. So be obedient to the Lord, right? Right. Love the Lord your God to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cling to him. And look what he says next. And to serve him, abide him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Wow. Our work is supposed to be done with what? All of our heart and with all of our soul onto whatever the work we're called to do and through that to be done onto God. Yes. Joshua here has Bless the very you. beginning of what he said Bless originally, you. right? Be obedient to the word and work unto the Lord with all your heart, and with all your soul. When we position ourselves in obedience and we work whatever we're called to do, cleaning house onto the Lord, feeding the homeless onto the Lord, accounting onto the Lord, administrating, whatever it is, but we do it onto him. We work, we work to, onto him with all of our heart and with all of our soul through whatever we're doing. Then we line ourselves up and calibrate ourselves and position ourselves to have the blessing released yes yes so good the third pivotal paradigm of transformation in ed's uh, book transformation is labor is the premier expression or abad is the premier expression of worship on earth and every believer is a minister hmm. so the third paradigm actually pulls this what we're talking about is that our labor, our work is no, it's, it's not separate from our relationship with God, but they are really go together as one. They're meant to be as one. And when we fully serve or labor with all of our heart and with all of our soul onto God in whatever we do in yes. the marketplace, that is a form of worship. Yes. That is the original form of worship. <clears throat> we'll get to this in another teaching, but the word abad, which is to labor, to serve, to work, is later translated 
in the Psalms as worship. The very word is later wow. translated as worship. So yeah, nice. this is so important because okay. it gives, it validates everybody who's working nine to five. Yes. As called onto the Lord to minister onto the Lord as entering into a, their own worship and meant to be calibrated to be connected to the Lord, which brings the Lord into every business and organization and into our, our entire city. Yes. And gets those organizations in the flow, whether they want to or not, whether they're righteous or unrighteous, they will get on into the flow because you are there. Yes. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. I would like to share something with that too. Uh, because I was, when you were sharing that, I was seeing that when you were saying that we, as we do our work onto the Lord, I couldn't help but think about, you know, in the book of Genesis, when the Lord did his work, you know, it says in, in Genesis 2, when he worked, he rested, you know, and also about the land when it yielded a great increase. That's why Jerusalem, a desert, has turned into this precious garden because they allow the land to rest. But then when they allow it to rest, it produces so much better. Uh, but when you were saying it about when the Lord, when we do our work unto the Lord as we worship, as worship, when he gave Adam work in the garden, it was after the, it was before the sin actually happened or right when it happened, it says that the father really walked with them in the cool of the day. He walked with them. He worked with them and they was doing a work unto the Lord. And it was that breath because it says that cool of the day is the breath, the ruah. And they walk in with God within the breath as they do their work unto the Lord. Everything is being transformed. So as we do our work unto the Lord, anybody, we bring that atmosphere of heaven and the Lord to work with us. Because I reason why I know this is true, because I was trying to figure out why at work I'm not talking about the Lord. And that's how you have a religious mindset. You're not, I'm not talking about God. I'm, not, I'm talking about work. And several times the Holy Spirit, the presence of God just comes right on into the room. Yes. And he just hits me all of a sudden. And I'm sitting there right in the midst of talking to my boss, Dan. And, and all of a sudden I feel the presence really strong. I'm like, and it just takes me off guard. You know, it's like, I'm like, oh, I'm not worshiping. I'm, not, I'm like, what's going on? You know, why are you here? I'm like, I'm not in, in worship. I'm not reading a word. I'm talking about work. But you really see that he's there to work with us you're doing yes. your work with the Lord, so he's walking on alongside of you in the midst of your work and his presence is there just like i shared a testimony with dean and i was, uh hush here the, uh but it's one time we was talking me and my boss sit at the desk we are talking about work and i'm and we engaging talking about work some heavy things and all of a sudden i saw the lord walk through the door and he was just stood there at my desk, just standing there. And I'm looking and the presence was really strong. And I'm looking at my boss and I'm like, and I'm starting to make these faces and starting to feel these, the, they're starting to want to shake. And I'm like, man, I got to control myself. Lord, what are you doing? And he's just sitting there smiling, just laughing, standing at my desk. And I'm like, wow, how did this happen? And he said, he said, whenever you are in a state of rest, I show up. <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't in, I wasn't in rest. I wasn't, I said, I, my mind wasn't on you. He said, well, yeah, your mind wasn't on me, but your spirit was at rest. Yeah. So I show up. <laughs> so I come to you on your job with you to walk with you in the cool of the day to work with you as you do your work as unto me as part of worship. So, yeah, so good. That's awesome. part of shalom. That's shalom there. <laughs> That's the shalom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here for us too. Uh, Proverbs 16, 3. I do this every morning on my way to work. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be 16, established. Yes. 16, 3. Okay. Yes. I mean, and what more would you want besides your thoughts to be established? You know? Yes. <laughs> we don't want Come our on. thoughts going, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
So um, give me the right right mindset. That's right. So let's let's look at three questions for our activation. No, well, it's, it's... So one question is, what is the work or labor the Lord has called you to do? I would propose the answer is actually what you're doing already. <laughs> yes. What you're doing already. That's the labor that he's, he may want you to calibrate it towards him, but he probably doesn't want you to change it. Right. Second question is, have you learned to serve the Lord with all your heart through your work? Have you, have you learned to serve the Lord with all of your heart through whatever your work is? Have you calibrated to where you realize these dishes that I'm washing, I'm doing it onto you, Lord. This diaper that I'm changing is onto you, Lord. This person I'm counseling, whatever it is, it's on yeah. you, Lord. It's calibrated towards you. And learning to do yes. that with all of my heart. Yes. And then the, the third question is, Do you separate your work life from your spiritual life with God? What would it look like to see them as one and the same? What would it look like to see all of your labor, all of your work, even the menial tasks, as a wonderful act of worship mm. of the Lord? When we, get, yeah. when we get those, I, I think that, uh, you know, that whole aspect of, of fulfilling our mandate to transform the city of New Orleans is so, this, this understanding, this revelation is so important, right? Because what that means is that the work day when people get activated as doing their job unto the Lord and it becomes a form of worship. Then we have worship going up from every office and every building and every business throughout our city. And there's just this connection to the Lord that's happening all over. That's nothing yeah. other than really being transformative. It's nothing short of being transformative. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. All right. So we'll, we'll go into the giving and then we'll, we'll hear some of your thoughts if you have any thoughts. So if you want to yes. give this evening, uh, if you're tech savvy, you can go to Venmo and uh, Voice of the Kingdom. You can look up Voice of the Kingdom on Venmo. Or PayPal, yeah. Voice of the Kingdom dash uh, New Orleans. Or you can give to us the next time we meet if you used to give them by check or something like that. But those, that's one way of doing that. So we'll give you an yes. opportunity to do that. So what, um, and if you're watching through Facebook and you want to give, you can also do that. Anybody have any uh, comments or? Uh, or well, the last one, I mean, about separating God, your spiritual and your, your work. I mean, God should be in every aspect of your life. 